Okay, hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3, where I'm hoping my recording is going to work. <laughs> and I just got back a few days ago from work, and I'm currently, I have to play video games because I have to rest my foot, because I hurt my foot while I was out. <laughs> but, so that's my, that's my excuse. But, um, it looks like we have a new message, perhaps, because the light is blinking, and that's what that often means. But we do also have squad points, and I was kind of looking at them. And I can fully upgrade the tactical cloak, and I think I'll get the uh, fire one power while cloaked and remain hidden ability. Um, but I was also looking at operational mastery, where I could do the increased power damage and duration by 25%, or the sniper rifle damage, which I'm not totally concerned about. I want to do the power damage and duration by 25%. I had a lot. That's a lot. Um, so making sure the last couple times I started this recording it's uh, not worked but hey Raven how's it going hey Shepard I've missed you I always miss playing the video games while I'm out and I miss chatting with you guys on a regular basis but this last time I was able to at least every other day get on and talk to you guys so that was nice we'll see we'll see if that continues next week Winter's coming. It's fall is here, and I'm like, can we stop camping now? Can we start staying in hotels? Cause it's cold. <laughs> but yeah, let's get increased power damage and duration by 25 percent. I'm excited. That'll be that'll be nice. That'll be nice. All right, and now we'll check our messages. Ah. Oh. From Miranda, Commander, I heard about your stay with the Alliance. I can only imagine what nonsense they cooked up to keep you there. We should talk. It's safer in person. You'll find me in the Citadel by Bay D24. Oh, okay. Caden, hey, Shepard. Still in the hospital, but I'm up on my feet, eating solid food and making trouble for the nurses. They'll probably throw me out soon. Come by if you're in the Citadel. Same room. Thanks, Caden. Uh, Alliance officials confirm a local resistance movement has successfully pushed Cerberus forces off Eden Prime. Cerberus attacked Eden Prime for reasons that remain unclear and set up facilities to occupy the colony. But after constant attacks from a united populace, Cerberus troops retreated. Alliance officials are sending in evacuation transports now to get colonists off world before Reaper forces reach the colony. We owe this victory to the Alliance resistance leader Edward Crabb said in a prepared statement. The people of Eden Prime have always been ready to fight, but Alliance Intel gave us the tools we needed to push those Cerberus bastards off our planet. Many resistance fighters have said that they plan to enlist support to support the Alliance. That's right. We should go check the um the war the war table thing. It's not the war table, but I don't know what else to call it. Um, what does this one do? Power recharge speed. I like this one, but the other one makes her boobs look weird. Like that one, just, it, not really, but it, it kind of does. But so does that one, and so does that. Like, and just like, can't do we? Do we have to have outfits that just do weird things to the chest? Like, Edie's looks nice. Why can't? Why can't? I get? But I don't know. They both. They all look nice. They just. They just. This one for some reason. This one makes her look really short to me. I don't know what it is. Oh, we'll try that one for a while. I think Yavik looks excellent in the black. <sighs> all right. All right. Let's do this. Oh, should I feed the fish? Feed them. I don't want them to die. I don't want to overfeed them. Frog. <laughs> oh, hey. What? What's this? Can I get in there? Why is there? Why is there an open panel here? What the heck? What the heck? I could just climb around the inside of my ship and play pranks. Oh, I guess I could do it from here too. But why is the panel up? People could just sneak right into my room. They could just all they had to do is pop out right here, climb over, and pop right in. This door is useless. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, let's go to the war room. I'm not even really sure what to do at this point. And there are things where, like, I, I don't want to, like, repeat myself too much from, like, my first time playing through Mass Effect 3, the blind playthrough I've got up. Oh, 
Oh no, what's going on? All right, I need to take care of my people. All right, let me go check the war table really quick since I'm here. All those refugees have to go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, this is like the longest loading screen ever. All right, all right, let's check it out. See what our assets are like. Alien Terminus Fleet. The Terminus Fleet is a sermon of mercenary vessels and pirate ships bound together by little more than common geography and a fear of the Reapers. Despite this volatile mix, the fleet seems to be functioning as one under the leadership of criminal warlord Arya Tloak. Yeah, but we gotta get like their loyalty first. <laughs> Alliance, so we got all those. Alliance Fifth Fleet. Fifthly became famous across the galaxy after spearheading Alliance forces of the Battle of the Citadel. It was guarding our turret station when the Reapers attacked. After a bloody and desperate battle, Admiral Hackett gave the order to retreat, sacrificing the entirety of the Alliance Second Fleet to give the Third and Fifth a chance to escape. The Fifth Fleet's engineers are busy repairing its damaged vessels, grimly anticipating a return to Earth in revenge against the Reapers. Oh, okay, so we did We did have this. We, we A pair of entrepreneurs was persuaded to switch from creating financial programs to advanced weapon targeting VIs and to sell them to the Alliance just above cost. So we had the Alliance Fifth Fleet, but now we have the updated one. Diana Allers only gives me five freaking points. Um, my frog raider did mention that after every interview, you get like three interviews or so, you, get, you actually get a lot of points from her. So I was like, fine. Fine. See, all Jelani's got ten. Eden Prime support. That's a, that's why I wanted to look for sure. Eden Prime's in a agrarian war, producing millions of tons of food that is sold to less arable planets. Alliance set up supply lines from this colony to funnel excess provisions to its troops. A few researchers on a study of present technology on Eden Prime avoided capture by Cerberus. They forwarded copies of their work to the Alliance, hoping we can help build the protein device found on Mars. Although its military defenses were seriously damaged by a Cerberus invasion. Oh, I apologize. Eden Prime's remaining government has loaned the Alliance several Athabasca class supply freighters. Nice! Eden Prime's colonists drove Cerberus away from their system entirely. With its shipping lanes secure, the colony is sending out as many supplies and equipment as it could spare. Excellent. Crucible. Prothean data files. Ooh, that's what we got from Eden Prime. Were found years ago in Eden Prime. It occurred a few months before the discovery of the Prothean Beacon in 2083. For years, the data on the disk was incomprehensible until the Crucible's blueprints provided the key to understanding the equations. Locked inside the disk were theories on dark matter meant to be used with the Crucible's main. So there, there's your only hint of dark matter in the freaking Mass Effect 3. Basically, after it was dr little little crumbs, little cookie crumbs were dropped throughout Mass Effect 2. And you're thinking it's going to be something really cool to do with dark matter, but it's not. It just gets tossed into this, like, friggin' super weapon, which is, like, the most boring thing ever. <laughs> so, where are we at on the... We're, like, almost... Oh. Oh, no. Okay, I see. <laughs> Total military strength and effective military strength. The war map is, um... That's something you have to do in multiplayer maps. Which would be kind of fun, actually, to be honest, but... Those are the terminus systems. Attican Traverse. Huh. Alright. Okay, I gotta crack open a pop or something. I don't even, I don't even have any down here. Oh, I don't have any pop. I might die. I might die, Dougie. Well, we'll record this one and then I might take a quick break and go grab some pop. Uh, we need to go downstairs though. Well, let's go poke Joker and see Joker and Edie. I'm not sure if at this point if things are changed, but if things with Cortez have changed, then 
Cortez is my pal, too. We're good friends. He's going through something similar to what Shepard will go through, and they sort of bond in that, sort of. Joker! So a Prothean, a real live Prothean, has Liara stopped bouncing yet? <laughs> I'm guessing there may have been some bouncing. <laughs> Commander? That's right, we just got Yavik. How's our new visitor adjusting to the ship, Edie? He appears not to understand the human system <laughs> of separate sex restroom facilities. I am attempting to enlighten him. I will update you if there is positive <laughs> Um, how about you just update me if he doesn't get the message? Very well. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's right, we've got a Prothean on board. I'll be bringing Yavik out. It's always fun, it's interesting to see how people react to him. Trainer, what's up? Can I talk to you yet, trainer? Those poor colonists on Eden Prime. Dang it! First the Geth attack, now Cerberus. For what it's worth, our new crew member doesn't need a translator himself, but he shared a Prothean language tutorial program. It was apparently designed for servant races being inducted into the Empire. Charming culture. I know, crew. right? Commander. Dang it! I didn't know you, you. I was gonna miss out on the chance to chat with her. I thought you could just do it later. Dang it! Makes me mad. Dang it! Trainer's cute. <laughs> oh yeah. See you there. This is a recording from Ferris Fields. Months ago. I lost a lot of friends that day. I lost my husband. I grieved. Said goodbye, made my peace. You were talking with him when the collectors hit? I was organizing construction at a remote station a few clicks south of the main colony. Robert managed to get outside of the field the collectors put up. Instead of running, he called me. Sorry for your loss. He obviously cared a lot about you. He was afraid I wouldn't let go. But for him, I moved on. Or at least I thought in the end. Alright, sorry for the interruption there. I did have a little bit of a recording glitch so we're gonna have to I, all I did was get like halfway through the Cortez conversation which made me mad because this is a very important conversation and it makes me makes me very sad for him so I love you but I know you don't make me an anchor promise me Steve no don't I've also decided Commander. that next time I play a male shepherd Sorry. I'm gonna romance Cortez this just breaks my heart every time because, like, it's it's so sad. Like, of everybody in here, he's dealing with a specific loss that he's having a hard time overcoming, and that's completely understand understandable. And it's an incident, like it's like uh, James, um, where he was involved indirectly with the collector stuff, and so was Cortez, you know, and. Legitimately, like, I don't know, like, maybe it's because, I don't know. Like, you can't, by falling in love with someone, you can't make them get over a previous love or loss or anything, but I feel like it would be helpful in, like, healing in a way. I guess it's sort of similar to Thane's romance, where you, you know, he, his wife died, like, ten years ago or more, but, you know, and it wasn't 
I didn't romance thing because I was like, oh, let me help you get over your grieving wife, you know, like, but it, and it's, it wouldn't be like that for Cortez either, but it would be something where, like, he's exposed and raw right now, and, like, seeing that in a person would elicit compassion and empathy, you know, and maybe eventually, like, you'd want, you'd want, like, as a male, because he's, because he's gay, right, so I'd only romance him if I was a male chef shepherd and you could just eventually like you know you're like I'm here for you all this stuff and eventually it could grow into love like let me support you like I I, you know I feel compassion for you and I I like you as a person and I want you to be happy you know it would start with there and it would just kind of grow from there I feel but I don't know I, I think you can romance Cortez pretty sure you can um it would be strange to romance, like, a different person every time. Like, every game. But it would be interesting. You were talking with him when the Collectors hit? I was organizing construction at a remote station a few clicks south of the main colony. Robert managed to get outside of the field the Collectors put up. Instead of running, he called me. I'm still not sure why. If he managed to get out of the field, he could... And I don't know why he couldn't call and run at the same time if it was, like, in his suit, you know? So, like, did, was, was, was Steve, like, a Robert, um, if he was outside the field that they put up, then he should have been fine. Like, they wouldn't, they shouldn't have come to get him or anything, you know? So, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sorry for your loss. He obviously cared a lot about you. He was afraid I wouldn't let go. But for him, I moved on. Or at least I thought I had. Then the invasion hits. There's no time. And the one thing I grab is this. I mean, what's the point of moving on with your life when everything is going to hell? Start thinking that way and we've already lost. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, but... Well, to be honest... I've never felt as alone as I do right now. And I don't think Cortez... I mean, when you meet him, he's right off the bat. Like, he's jumping into things. He's all serious, professional mode. And he's a chill guy, but, like, this... This has hurt him deeply, and he, you don't just say this to a person, especially to your commanding officer. Like, that just takes, that means he's in a certain place where, like, he legitimately is very alone right now and doesn't really have anybody to talk to about it, you know, or you just happen to show up at this specific point in time where, you know, you could help him. You're not alone, Steve. I'm here. Anytime you need me. I appreciate that, Shepard. I really do. But don't worry, Commander. When I'm in that pilot seat, I'm there 100%. I won't fail you. It's just the downtime between missions that's hard, you know? I know. Shepard knows. Like, that moment, I mean, she she knows, you know? And and it really is. Like, you can be as busy. That's why he tries to keep busy, so he doesn't get caught up in this. But, like, in, in you know, the grieving or whatever. But there's nothing wrong with that. But... I mean, it's it's hard. There, there's really no way to like cut and dry call it. It's it's different for every person how they cope with situations like that. But I guess since we're here, we'll poke James. See if he's got anything to say. I still can't believe it. A real live Prothean. <laughs> Doc must be over the moon. He could say that. I hear the guy's not all there. <laughs> exactly. Damn. <laughs> I can't imagine. Brought forward 50,000 years. Last of your kind. That's bound to screw with your mind. Yeah. Well, here's hoping he can help us with the Reapers. He's definitely... I mean, play, the the idea that he's a vengeance, that he's the avatar of vengeance, is very intriguing to me since I've now played the Dragon Age games and I've met Anders. <laughs> and then also Mythol and uh, Flemeth and everything and... It's just very, it's very interesting. It's very interesting that Bioware seems to kind of keep that, that idea. Oh, and hey, we got our new engineers too. Sorry, my dog is like, he's being all weird. Also, since my computer was glitching out earlier and I restarted everything, I ended up going to the grocery store and buying some soda pop. Turned out they had Jones soda on sale, so... I love that stuff. <laughs> it says that because the caps of Jones sodas have like uh, fortune cookie type things. It says Wednesday is the day to make your move. <laughs> Too bad today is Thursday.
good stuff. I love this stuff. See, my dog was all calm earlier today because I played with him outside and played some brain games and sleeping peacefully and then I had to go to the store and now he's like, oh my gosh, let's do things again. And I'm like, dude, no, I'm busy playing the video. I guess we'll talk to Diana really quick. You mean the biggest story in 50,000 years that I can in no way talk about? <laughs> so yeah, I've seen him. Just wondering. Oh boy. All right, let's get this out of the way. How's your new assignment working out, Allers? Fairly normal, except for the unshackled AI, Matriarch Benezia's daughter, and the communicator that can reach Earth. The first two, I can deal with. That last one gets my attention. So what are you asking for exactly? <laughs> Anything from Earth is the lead story right now. That's not opinion, it's fact. Maybe I can pass on a few non-classified progress updates. Seriously? You just doubled my ratings. I don't need FaceTime, just a data upload. Tell people what's really happening on Earth. We need long recruiting lines on every planet after you air a story. I can do this, Commander. Remind me to tell you about the time I made an Elcor cry. See, she could be so useful, but she just doesn't seem like she is, like, ever. You know? Man, oh, we're gonna meet, um... Oh, shoot, what's his name? What's his name? Um, the guy who was in here, the mercenary. Shoot, what's his name? Is he gonna come with us? Like, is he gonna... Because Kasumi doesn't fight with us. Kasumi goes... Is she helps with the crucible, but is is he gonna come and help us out, or is he gonna be doing his own thing? Man, I wanna freaking see him. Where's he at, Commander? Okay. Wait. Oh no. Okay. This side's no point. <laughs> so Yo! It is new boarding. Oh, <laughs> this was coming. I just mean. It's an amazing work of engineering. Elastic titanium silicon polymers, ultra light harmonic. How does he know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if she ever accidentally walks into a wall, there's just so much padding. Ugh, I knew it. There's really not I much. A wall. <laughs> you pretty much are, Ken. <laughs> I love these two. It's great to be back. Feels good to be in an alliance uniform. Yeah, it's good to have you back. Welcome aboard, Chief. Nothing to report. Okay. Adams, how's your new people? Need anything, Commander? Uh. How's Engineer Donnelly working out? The kid's got talent. Now if he could just learn to shoot. Adams is like the old man, Dad. Problems? I'm sorry, Commander. Donnelly is dedicated, knowledgeable, and thinks on it. He's team. like, don't be mean to I'm me. Glad to have him on my team. Could use a lesson or two about respecting chain of command, but I've handled the likes of him before. No need for concern. Adams is engineer dad. He is engineer dad all the way. He also helped out uh, Tally a lot, too. Like, he encouraged her interest in, like, everything that she was interested in with, like, the Mass Effect core drives and stuff. How's engineer Daniels working out? Her, I like. She's sharp and knows propulsion theory better than most physicists I've met. And she's easy to work with, too. Always said you had an eye for talent. Good job bringing her back to the Alliance. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> that actually makes me feel really good. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, ma'am. Adam, Adam's dad. Engineer dad. I told you Shepard would come visit. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. I got you guys pardoned. I'm going to come visit. Let's see if Yavik says anything. Or if somebody says something to him. You're saying they survived into this cycle? Yes. We called them Collectors. They fought for the Reapers. For a long time, no one knew they were Prothean. And when did you realize? Shepard had no choice but to kill the ones she encountered. They were all indoctrinated, and had been for a long time. I'm sorry. I am grateful. It was an act of mercy. Indeed. Yes, I suppose it was. Indeed. I still have much to learn about this cycle. Is that your uh, parting? I still have yep. much okay. to learn about this cycle. I remember looking around, kind of wondering what they put in here. I don't think he'd use the desk. 
I am really curious what this stuff is. Like, I don't know. It doesn't move like water does. It, I mean, it kind of does, but... And what exactly does he have access to here? Is this just like a computer, giant computer terminal where he can, like, learn things? And that's his memory shard. Might do things differently with that this time around. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, no. No, okay. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of want to go out and do something action-y, um, but, I mean, we've got Caden back at the hospital. We'll never get a letter from Caden. I'm like, oh, Thane is back there! <laughs> I had someone comment once, that, like, because I used to go and visit Thane. Every time we were on the Citadel, I would go back and visit Thane and just talk with, even if it's the same stuff over and over again, I couldn't help it, right? I had to. I couldn't just leave him there without saying anything, and there was somebody who commented once, and they were like, it just breaks my heart seeing you do that and knowing what's coming, and I was like, boo! <laughs> I don't know why they closed the windows. That is very weird to me. I, I mean, it just makes the space more, like, claustrophobic. <sighs> I wish Samara could come with us. I know she can't, but... I don't know. It's all just slightly different. Which is not, I mean, it's, it's good, right? It's good that it is, otherwise, I mean, it wouldn't feel the same. But Oh, and somebody did mention that the lighting, they felt like in the SR2 and Mass Effect 3, that the lighting was a lot dimmer. And you know what? I mean, I'm, every now and then I'll look at my shepherd, and I'm like, like, it, like the camera will like pan over like, while I'm doing, like, spinning around, and I'm like, holy crap, you're right. Like, most places where shepherd stands, like, it looks like she's in the dark. So, and I never really noticed it before. And I still think it's, it's fairly bright, but when I look, at, even at her back, it's like she's, like, very not well lit at all, you know? And so, it, I mean, it, it kind of fits, you know? Like, the lighting does affect the mood of, like, the game and the ship and everything, and everything... I mean, it's not bad at all. It's just different. But I do wish the lighting was a little bit brighter. Like, everything just does seem quite dark. There are very big, shadowy new areas. information on the private messages terminal. Okay. I haven't gotten a new uh, thingy, have I? Okay. Or wait, no, I think I'm supposed to click on it. None? Oh, okay. Liara, how you, how you taking things? A Prothean. A living, breathing yep. Prothean right below me. Yep. He's not what I expected. Me neither. He was a little cold when I tried to talk. I understand the shock of waking up again. His species gone. But a Prothean shepherd. Yeah. There's so much he could tell us. But apparently there isn't. I mean, he, he is really just a soldier. Like, he's a straight up... And he's young. He's very... I don't think... It, I don't... I've never even... I, I mean, I don't usually look up, like, fan theory stuff very much. Sometimes I'll see stuff, but, like... Um... I've never really looked up and seen if anybody's ever, like, made, like, an interesting, like, uh, discussion board or something on whether... Um, on the fact that Yavik seems to be fairly young... Like, despite him being brought forward 50,000 years, like, he was born in the height of their destruction, you know? Like, that, ha that has to affect the way you lived and breathed. Like, all you see are memories of the way the Empire used to be, and you know it was glorious, and you can see that, but at the same time, every day, he was only dealing with the destruction, and that has to be so sad to, like, see the destruction of an empire that you never even saw and it's it's like you were born basically with nostalgia already in place like you know like you're missing a time that you never even saw you know so i think that's it's very interesting and i think i don't know how long protheans lived on average but i get the feeling that he's basically liara's age maybe a little over a hundred years old um but in many ways infinitely wiser just because you know he is a prothean my camera is like slowly spinning i'm not doing anything it's just slowly spinning on its own but um i like the detail look i like looking at the details but yeah um 
I don't know. I just feel like he he didn't have the time age-wise to learn everything, nor did he have the time because so much knowledge was already lost and he was fighting a losing battle every day. So while they had, like, instantaneous communication by, like, touch and everything and using the beacons, like, so much was destroyed by then that, like, all they had were bits and pieces, you know? And, like, he might not even know what would be useful to us. He might have this knowledge in his DNA somewhere, but he doesn't really know exactly what would be useful to us. And he can't just sit there and, like, recite everything he can think of, which, I mean, it'd be hard to get him to do that anyway, but... I don't know. Hello again. Hello. Let's see how uh, Farron's doing. But it, oh God, oh God. Prothean, oh yeah. The things this Prothean, 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 Prothean must have seen if they had the technology to preserve someone over 50,000 years. No wonder they were capable of building things like the device on Mars. I must give him the time to get his bearings, but goddess, when, when will we get another chance to learn so much about their civilization? And this is the stuff, like, I wish we could hear Liara saying this stuff, because this is, like, her character, but it's written in the Prothean notes. And we don't get a whole lot of that. And her voice, there's something about her voice acting, and I like Liara, but at the same time, I just... I don't know. Something's always, always kind of just rubbed me the wrong way, just slightly in Mass Effect. Well, in Mass Effect Two, a little bit, but in Mass Effect Three, she just seems very bland. And, but I don't know. Her character started out as a very innocent, naive, like archaeologist, and which I, I liked in a way. But now she just seems so caught up in the information broker stuff. I wish we could see more of the archaeology side of these. Which we are right now seeing with Yavik, you know? Like, we see that a little bit more now with her. But, whoa, I think I've already made a comment on those. But look at those alien wares. See how, uh, Chakwaz is doing. Pretty sure she's fine. I'm glad to see we have Garrus back. I wanted to help with his scars, but I think he actually likes them. I think you're right. That's true, we could get Garrus's scars redone, but... Nothing in here ever. I kind of actually thought for a second, I was like, oh, I'll go talk to Legion, but nope. Let me see if there's... Reassign power bonuses. Reassign powers. I don't want to, like, get rid of all my points. Okay. Oh, so I could, I mean, I could buy a new one. You know, maybe I'll get, the decoy isn't working very well, as well as I would like. I could maybe get the defense drone. Energy drain was awesome, though. But that was when I was a vanguard. I don't know. Steel barrier and shield power. That was necessary when I was a a vanguard. It was very, very freaking useful. A defense drone. I still, I like the idea of the decoy. I still kind of want to play with it. I think I'll, I think I'll keep playing with it, but we'll see. Always a chance to change things. Let's go with poke gears. As we glide along in our weird little clompy glide. Boop. Seen a lot of crazy things in my time on the Normandy, Shepard. Talking Reaper, a talking <laughs> plant, and now a real live talking Prothean. Hell of a thing, waking up to find everything you know is destroyed. But I imagine the chance to get some payback is consolation. Doubt you and I will ever get a second chance against the Reapers. Yeah. That's right, Garrus. For sure, for sure. We've got one shot to make this work. Interesting that we didn't progress as far as the Protheans, but I think it was because the Protheans, like, hardcore unified, and so every single species was working for the betterment of the entire, you know, species, basically. Um, 
but that came at a price, at a loss of free will, you know? Like, I, I've heard rumors recently of, like, trying to get people onto Mars in the next, like, year or so. Things always seem to get tied up, or... I mean, there's been some really cool theories, and there's been some really cool... NASA's been, you know... They have that, like, new website that I still need to go check out, like, with, like, all their research, like, available for public consumption, which I kind of thought it was, but I guess not, but now it is. Um, and I don't know, I, got, I, was, I have to verify these things, because I only ever see them, and then I'm like, oh, and, like, I don't ever remember to go and verify them, so... Before I start broadcasting things, I should probably verify what where things are and what they come from. Um... All right, let's go do things. Let's go do things. Well, I guess I'll probably have to actually call this part here. Um, I'm not sure what we're gonna do. I think I I like to sort by the oldest. I kind of want to do a couple, like at least like two missions, and then. I won't be doing the war summit for a while. Maybe we should go do the Grissom Academy thing actually next. To get that done. Because Gris if we go to Grissom Academy, we'll also get the biotic amp interfaces for the Citadel. Hmm. And I do so I need to go stop by the Citadel. Because I need to talk to Miranda and Caden and Thane. And I need to do I need to do the um, Aria stuff. No, I said sort by the oldest. Don't change it on me. Um, yeah, I need to do that. It doesn't. It's not like hard or anything. It's just time consuming, and it kind of makes you feel dirty. I don't know. Like it feels like you're, but it, it, it's kind of a quest that shows you, or a mission that shows you. Uh, you, know, you you will either do what you need to do to get the resources you need or you won't and you won't have those resources you know but like how far are you willing to go you know what I mean so oh man I'm excited I'm excited to go out and look at the world again and look at more more stuff but yep all right I'm gonna go now, but thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying it so far. That usually what ends up happening in Mass Effect 3, I've noticed, is I spend like a half an hour chatting with everybody on the crew and double checking things. It takes about a half an hour, even if there's like no changes in the conversation. It takes a good 20 minutes to get through everybody. Um, but then I'll head out. So this one kind of ran a bit long with some technical glitches though. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes from here. But thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next one. Element zero can increase or decrease the mass of a volume of space-time when subjected to an electrical current. With a positive current, mass is increased. With a negative current, mass is decreased. The stronger the current, the greater the magnitude of the dark energy mass effect. In space, low mass fields allow FTL travel and inexpensive surface-to-orbit transit. High mass fields create artificial gravity and push space debris away from vessels. Okay, hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 where today I think we're gonna go to Grissom Academy. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if any of these, wow, come into focus planet, geez. Um, if any of these, uh, um, are like, rated like a level wise i'm pretty sure everything just scales to your level in mass effect 3 um but grissom academy is a pretty long one to do but oh we got 100 percent of the assets discovered in utopia thank you um uh, meet with diplomats no thank you 
No, thank you. Um, I could go, where, where is it at? I can't remember. Rescue students. Oh, we're, we're close by anyway. Yeah, let's hop over. I can never talk over that. It's way loud. Sometimes I do that in, when I'm editing. It's the only thing I have to like lower down an audio because it's just like Bruh! but I, someday I want to make a playthrough where like I will do things like in order like okay so then there's so, like in Mass Effect 2 specifically it's like there's like I did it last time I basically did the quests or the personal missions in order of um uh how I got, who I got them from you know I tried to do the ones I got oldest first you know but I think sometime I want to try it where I do in Mass Effect 3 as well, like where you do the missions like, oh look, we're right next, like right here, we're right next to the system, let's jump to it. And then we'll jump to the next one that's closest, and then the next one that's closest, you know. And there's another time I want to do one where it's like just, um, how, doing things like in order of like, it, like highest importance, like, oh my gosh, we're dying, we need you right now. But we, you can actually just like, you know, do whatever, you can just get to there whenever you want, you know, but... <laughs> Gilead, the bomb of Gilead. The largest object in the climb belt. Gilead is a stony dwarf planet of rock and ice mined for its nickel. It's notable for a recent collision with another asteroid. The residents had several weeks of advanced warning and set up recording devices. Uh, after selling the footage, that's right. The residents found they are somewhat famous as well as a little wealthier. Of the 221 residents, all but 25 proceeded to leave the nickel business. I don't blame you. I mean, you know, bigger and better things, right? All right, and we gotta let's see. All right, we haven't set off any alarms. Moderately sized hydrogen helium Jovian planet. Jock by, it's close enough to reflective to see in Elysium. Elysium's night sky. Its orbit is retrograde, possibly indicating its stellar capture. Uh, it's favorably positioned along a trade route. Yeah, Grissom Academy is, is uh, orbiting around Elysium, apparently. Which, yeah, it's like this is where John Grissom wanted to retire to. Said he wanted one, he's, when searching for a colony to retire to, Alliance here, John Grissom said he wanted the warmer the sun. Had the decency set at a reasonable time. Elysium fulfilled this criteria many more, featuring low gravity, tolerable atmosphere, and suitable climate. They flock to this alpine paradise. It's a violent hub, or a vi vibrant hub. Security is a constant concern for Elysium. Planet has suffered. Yeah, this is the one where the Skillian Blitz took place. So I feel like um, this is actually a very important planet for Shepard as well. You know, like she saved this planet back in the day. You know, uh, material and volunteers from Elysium form part of the Second Alliance Second Fleet. Oh no. And that was the one that was sacrificed to save the other fleets. I am very curious how how Admiral Hackett chose to sacrifice the second fleet. Like what? I mean, his fleet was the fifth fleet, right? So he had to salvage that one because he is a leader. He had to survive. The leader always has to survive, otherwise things aren't. I mean, in, in a lot of military, you know, teachings or whatever doctrine, um, the the leader needs to survive no matter what because they're the ones that can get the things done, you know, type thing. Like, in some cultures, it's the leader is the one leading from the front, and they're the ones willing to die first, you know, and there's honor and glory in that. But then there's also the ones that need to coordinate and are tactical, and they operate from the back, and they, you know, type thing. It's just two different mindsets, and both have their pros and cons. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It looks like this place hasn't been hit by Reapers yet, though. Tire. Wrapped in a crushing atmosphere. Clouds of ash from volcanic eruptions trigger frequent lightning storms on the surface. Sidon. Ooh, that's a cool looking ice planet. <laughs> it's a cold desert planet. 
Oh, shoot. Project was classified until recently when Blue Sun's mercenaries who allegedly attacked the facility were apprehended and brought to trial, revealing the facility's existence in open court. Eager to counter negative publicity. Wait, so what were they doing? They built a s alliance planners, found gravity agreeable, however, and built a small domed research facility on the planet in 2160. A leasing investment firms now advertise set on free of military facilities just miss away from the garden world thanks to recent improvements. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh no, we did that, Gillian. That's right, it's in the asteroid belt. Well, it looks like there's gonna be nothing in here because the Reapers aren't freaking out, but that didn't, of course that didn't, wasn't the way it worked last time, so 